Hi, it's me again with another one of my little stories. This one's about the St. Francis River. We, we live not very far from the St. Francis River here. If I had to name one thing out of 10, out of 10 things in my life that I treasure, it would be the St. Francis River, one out of 10. And that's saying quite a bit because I've been, I've traveled quite a bit over in Europe, been to Canada, I've been to every state but one in the United States, so to pick out one thing that is really a treasure to me and tell you about it, that's pretty good, being the St. Francis River. It's a tributary of the Mississippi River. You know how much I love the Mississippi River, too. I have a special place in my heart for it, too. The St. Francis is located in the Ozarks and flows through the St. Francis Mountains from Missouri and into Arkansas. The St. Francis Mountains are the eroding remnants of an ancient range of mountains believed to be the oldest mountains in the world. We would always take our kids floating on one of these Missouri streams in the summertime. We would always admire all those neat little cabins we would pass by on our float trips. As we pass by them, I'd always suggest to my husband, I wish I had, we had one of those little cabins. And my, but my cousin Charles had, one, had a cabin on a cabin lane, and I called him and asked him if he would watch for us. Well, cousin Charles called me, told, told me that there was one vacant on their cabin lane. Charlie and his wife Josephine took us down to see that cabin one, that same day. We stopped at the landlord's house and told him we'd take the cabin. He said, well, don't you even want to look at it? He said, no, if it, the cabin's good enough for Charlie and Josephine, it's good enough for us. But the landlord insisted we should look at the cabin and make sure we would be happy with it. The rent was very reasonable, but we were to take care of all the maintenance and any remodeling. In other words, we wanted to make it better, we were the ones to pay for it. I still remember the smell of that cabin when we opened the door. That was a long time ago. You could, it was so stale, the air in there, you could tell it had not been open for a long time. Well, I was really anxious to get started fixing it up, and, and we did start fixing it up right away. Um, but the kids loved the, they just loved the cabin, and they were running up and down, scampering up and down the bank, the back of that cabin. And there was a lot of old, a brush growing back there, but there was also bluebells. And uh, the cabin was made out of, uh, looked like roofing material, kind of, but it wasn't. It was what they used to make a lot of houses out of. That kind of looked like fake brick. This one was kind of made out of fake gray brick. This type of siding lasts forever. And actually, you still see a lot of older houses made out of that kind of siding. There was a sink with a drain, but no water. And there was a, the cabin had a path. A, it was an outhouse and a path through it. There was no, but there was no, like I said, no water. We got water later. We rented this cabin in the early 1970s. We painted it while we, what we called cabin blue. The bank between the cabin and the river was just covered with brush and bluebells. The poor little bluebells were trying to stick their heads out among all that undergrowth. I decided that was my first project, would be to clear that brush from the cabin and try to save those bluebells. My husband warned me of all the poison ivy that was on that bank, but oh, you are real strong, told him. Well, I don't have to worry about that. You're the one who gets poison ivy, not me. Well, folks, now those famous last words. I was the one who got the poison ivy. It wasn't real bad. I was only, it was only where I had scratched myself that I got the poison ivy. It's, but it still made me miserable. I guess you know I heard about that for a real long time. I wish I had known about the Highlands homopathic poison ivy medicine that we sell here in Earth Mother. It would have really help. We sell a lot of it, and I just couldn't resist telling you that. We spent several weekends that spring and had the cabin in pretty good shape by Mother's Day. 
My husband cut a large section out of the cabin wall that faced the river. He put two windows, like with hinges, like French doors that opened up. Man, it opened up the, let a lot of fresh air into that cabin. I'm kind of recycling. I got to looking at the section he cut out of that wall. I decided that some flotation styrofoam could be placed in between the walls and the studs. We could recycle scraps of the wall into a raft for the boys. We got the supplies to complete the project. I spent Mother's Day that year watching my boys pole that makeshift raft up and down uh, the section of the St. Francis River. Our cabin neighbors enjoy them too and call them Tom and Huck, you know, from Huckleberry Finn. I do believe renting the cat, that cabin was one of the best things we did for our children. children. We spent such quality time with them at the cabin and on the river. They learned the techniques and the skills of fishing and able to identify all kinds of fish. They learned to maneuver boats and canoes through the riffles on a, that tricky river. And let me tell you, the St. Francis is a tricky river. It seemed we took the time at the cabin to play games with them in the evenings that we would have never done at home. We have always lived out in the country and I still live where I cannot see a house from my house today. My dad was a farmer and <laughs> who always, and he, he had always lived in the country too and he thought we were crazy when we rented that cabin. He said, well, why do you live in the middle of the woods now? And he said, besides that, he said, uh, you got ponds you can fish out of. What do you want to drive 75 miles to go down there and sleep? But I told him that we thought that the, that was going to be a really good thing for the kids. And besides that, we didn't have the St. Francis River running through our backyard. And we did down there. The St. Francis is a special river. It might not be as clear a stream as some of the others, but it possesses a mystery unlike the others. It is like a sleeping giant that appears to be serene and quiet with its long, slow moving, silent passageways. But don't underestimate the surprise it has for you around the next curve. It has a wild side that always keeps you guessing and boy, believe me, it does. The 15 cabins up and down the lane provided our children with a neighbor, sort of a neighborhood type of atmosphere. And they never had that because they, they we didn't have any neighbors close to. This was something they never had at home. We borrowed food, ice, fish bait, and cetera from our neighbors and always paid them back. We had a key to our cousin's cabin and we would always borrow stuff from them. They would borrow stuff from us. So it was kind of a neat thing we had going down there. We enjoyed the cabin all of those years, paddling up the river to Lee's Bluff and camping on that old sandbar up there. Downstream all the way to Jewett, for, for what the local po folks down there call Doug Hill Bridge. You got all these little country things, you know. Many memories were made in those 20 years. The only bad memories was when the river would flood. One time it washed our cabin a half a mile out into this great big field. We borrowed our landlord's big tractor and logging equipment. We skidded that cabin back. We even put it on a little different location. But the flood of 1993 came along and it tore the tech cabin completely out. But we'd had it for tw over 20 years. But even with the flood and losing the cabin and all of our stuff that was in it, we have such special memories of our cabin days. I will always treasure them and feel our children were groomed to be better people from the years spent on the St. Francis River. I have a lot of memories on the St. Francis River, and in the next few weeks, I'll share some more of them with you. But the one next week is going to be uh, Lee's Bluff and the Full Moon. You won't want to miss that one.